Are you tired of feeling overwhelmed and stuck in your current situation? Then it's time for a mindset reset. Join me in my six-part mindset reset training and learn how to overcome the negative thought patterns that are holding you back. With my proven techniques and strategies, you'll be able to cultivate a positive mindset and start living the life of abundance you absolutely deserve and desire. Don't allow overwhelm to hold you back any longer. Take control of your mindset and transform your life today. Hi, my name is Jay Nixon, and I'm the author of the best-selling weight loss book, The Overweight Mind. Over the years, I've helped countless clients from all over the world transform their lives by improving their mindset. Through my work, I've come to understand that the key to any transformation lies in the power of the mind. As I've seen in firsthand, a positive and empowered mindset that can be the catalyst for profound change in all areas of your life. That's why I'm excited to share with you my insight, strategies, and tools for transforming your mindset and living the life you truly desire. By focusing on the power of your mind, you can overcome obstacles, break through limiting beliefs, and achieve your goals, whether it's losing weight, building the dream career you've always wanted, or improving your relationships. So join me on this journey of transformation and discover the power of your own mind to create the life you deserve. If you'd like more information about me, my studio, my program, or my supplement line, you can go to thriveforeverfit.com, find all the information, all my social media links, everything. Let's jump into the training. I am super excited about today's training. Training number three, the hidden enemy within, how limiting beliefs are sabotaging your success. This is one of my favorite topics to train on because it's one of the main things that hold people back from their true potential. Overcoming your limiting beliefs, aka getting out of your own damn way, how you identify your limiting beliefs and how you overcome them how you stop self-sabotaging when you're just almost to where you want to be. We've all done it. We all do it. This training is going to help you overcome those limiting beliefs. It's going to help you recognize your self-sabotaging triggers, and it's going to give you the tools and the resources you need to stop that limiting belief behavior. I'm excited about it. You're going to love it. All right, Mindset Warriors, today's training is going to be pivotal in your growth and involvement. It's something that I know you've heard before. You've probably never addressed it in the way that we're going to address it today. We're going to talk about overcoming limiting beliefs. Some of you guys have probably heard of this as upper limiting, getting in your own damn way. Like we've all been told at some point in our life, just get out of your own way. We watch other humans and we're like, all they have to do is get out of their own way, but they don't ever seem to be able to do that. And the reason for that is their default setting. Your default setting is your upper limiting. It's your thermostat on how high or how hot you're going to let your life burn before you try to cool it off. Some of you will have massive success and you'll get really uncomfortable and you'll lose everything you had. Some of you will make a lot of money and then you'll lose all the money. Some of you will get in an amazing relationship and you'll do something to destroy it. That is upper limiting. That is a default setting in full effect. And here's the truth. When people hold on to unhealed fears and beliefs, they see everyone and everything through that filtered lens of fear, pain, and limiting. They project their past onto their present and their future. That's exactly what some of you guys are doing right now. And until we get to the bottom of that, until we teach you how to overcome that limiting belief, not just how to overcome it, but actually get you to do the work related to it. And you replace that limiting belief with a new powerful, strong belief that's going to get you the results that you deserve and desire out of life. Nothing's going to change for you. We can focus on all the mindset training we want. We can, we can go into the subconscious brain and creating new neural pathways and affirmations and I ams and journaling and all those things. And they're all fantastic and they're all great and they all work. But until we uncover and then eliminate and replace these old antiquated limiting beliefs that you're living by, 
Your life today, guys, is predicated on the identity that you've established for yourself. And the identity you've established for yourself is predicated on the belief system you have about yourself. And most of you believe that you are less worthy than you truly are. Most of you believe that you only deserve this amount of blank. It might be money, it might be happiness, it might be love, it might be success. You believe that based on, I'm going to teach you this today, based on a lot of different variables that have been impacted and exhibited into your life. So what is a limiting belief? Limiting beliefs are thoughts and opinions that one believes to be absolutely true. That's why I call them a default setting, because if you believe something to be absolutely true, you're going to do everything you can to make sure that that is absolutely true. You see what I'm saying? They tend to have a negative impact on one's life by stopping people from moving forward and growing either personally and or professionally. Some examples of limiting beliefs can be something as simple as this. I need the love and approval from those around me. Hear the word I need. I need love and approval. You don't need love and approval from those around you. Who you need love and approval from is from yourself. And then if you, if you have that for yourself, then you will get it from other people because you'll surround yourself with the right people. Another one is to be worthwhile, to be worthy. I must achieve and succeed in whatever I do and I'm not allowed to make mistakes. Well, holy shit, that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody, right? Especially yourself, you're not allowed to make mistakes. We all make mistakes, we're flawed creatures. Another one is I'm unhappy because the outside world controls my happiness. Everybody else is to blame for my life. That's a big one. A lot of people have that one. You've got to, you've got to adopt the new belief system that life happens for you and not to you. And lastly, before we move on, another one is people should always do the right thing. They should. I mean, in, in actuality, I'd love for people to always do the right thing. And then the next part of that is they should, or, and if they don't, they should be blamed and punished. I mean, listen, we're not talking about high level stuff like the bad stuff people do, but I think a lot of people carry that belief system around when people just simply make mistakes. And the reason they do that is because when you make a mistake, you punish yourself. You give yourself the, you give yourself an F and you take it out on yourself and then you feel shame and you feel guilt and you perpetuate that cycle over and over again. So of course, you're going to look at life through that same lens and treat everybody else around you with that same level of scrutiny. That's a hard way to live, guys, but that's simply a limiting belief. In most cases, limiting beliefs are unconscious thoughts that act as defense mechanisms to avoid possible negative emotions like frustration, anxiety, anger, sadness, but it goes even deeper than that. They're limiting beliefs that will actually get you out of a successful momentum shift and back into a life that you feel comfortable living. This, a lot of people have the limiting beliefs around money because they grew up and their parents said something like money doesn't grow on trees. We can't afford that. Don't, we don't spend money on that, blah, 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 blah. And so as an adult, you've adopted those same belief systems and no matter how much money you have, you always feel scarcity and lack. You always feel like there's not gonna be enough. And even when you get money, you don't know how to treat it because of your belief system around it. You've adopted a belief that money is bad. People with money are bad. You see what I'm saying? You know, a lot of people like that. So where do these limiting beliefs even come from? They come from your, your knowledge level. And I'm going to explain that a little bit later. Your knowledge level can either be a massive benefit for you or it could be an, an absolute detriment. It comes from future vision or what I call future casting. You forecast negativity. You forecast loss. You forecast lack. You forecast losing things. I know this one to be true because it was one of my go-tos. I forecasted bad things happening to me based on bad things that had happened to me. And that leads me to the next one, which is past results. If something bad happens to you in the past, oftentimes you will take that with you into the future. The next one is your environment. What environment are you in? Who are you hanging around? What is the belief system of that environment? Are they building you up or are they crashing you down? Are they negative? Are they positive? And then lastly is events. And that kind of goes hand in hand with past results. But it could be a specific event that happened to you around a specific incident, like something like a divorce 
you know, that will be very, very challenging for some people because then they will start to view all relationships from that framed lens of negativity and all the pain and the drama that were associated with that. And you'll create a limiting belief about love. You'll create a limiting belief about other humans not having the ability to either love you and or be loved by you. That could be massively detrimental to your happiness and your success. So limiting beliefs are said to largely be developed during childhood. Now, I, there's a caveat for that for me. Yes, they are, because as a child, you're very malleable. Like your brain is just a sponge. For me, my father got killed when I was five years old. And so I was in a position where I had zero recall of anything related to an event like that. So I took that on as bad things happen to people like me. I'm five years old. Why on earth would God take my dad away from me? doesn't make any sense to a five-year-old. You don't have any ability to understand that. And so I looked at life through the lens of bad things happen to Jay. And I perpetuated behavior that led me to see bad things happening to me. It was a completely misguided belief system but I didn't know any better. And so a lot of times you can develop these thoughts as a, in your early childhood, but I want you to understand that just because you got them in your early childhood doesn't mean you have to take them with you everywhere you go. In actuality, you cannot take them with you everywhere you go. My life monumentally changed when I, when I developed a new belief system that amazing things happened to Jay Nixon. Just because those things happened to me in the past doesn't mean they're going to happen to me in the future. I stopped future casting. I stopped putting my, I stopped looking at life through the lens of a five-year-old as a 30-year-old man. And then you think about that. As a 30-year-old, you're letting a five-year-old brain drive your belief system. Well, if you said that to any normal, you know, conscious human, they'd be like, well, that sounds crazy. Sounds crazy, but we all do it. Some of you guys are doing it right now. But also a lot of these behaviors are developed, like I said a while ago, could be based on a divorce, could be based on a really bad relationship, could be based on a loss of money, maybe like a bankruptcy or something of that nature, could be based on poor physical health. And you've, you've convinced yourself that you're destined to be overweight. You're destined to have health problems because maybe your mom had health problems or your family's always been overweight. So therefore you must be overweight. So you've developed that brain system. I've heard people say that to me all the time. It's like, oh no, my, my whole family's overweight. And that their belief system is predicated on, well, then that therefore means I have to be overweight. And it's completely a fallacy. It's completely a made up, a limiting belief. So when you develop these belief systems, your identity, good and or bad, behaviors and emotions are created by this belief system. For instance, a child who is treated as if they're loved and valued and will often have a well-developed belief system about being loved and wanted. On the contrary, a child who is abused or neglected will tend to develop a belief system they're unworthy and unwanted. And truth be told, we all fall somewhere in the middle of that. You know, hopefully none of you were ever abused or unwanted as a child. And then oftentimes we're not given as much love as we wish we had. So the, the belief system that I have is that my mother did the absolute 100% best she had with what she had available to her. And so that's released me from any feelings of good or bad from my childhood. I know that my mom loved me tremendously. She might not have always been able to show it because of the situation that she was put into. And so I've given my life situation from a young childhood age, including my mother and my family, grace to say, we did the absolute best we could. And I'm not going to look at life through the lens of only having a mom and not having a dad and not seeing love and not knowing love and not watching an affectionate family. I'm not going to let that inhibit my growth as an adult. So that's overcoming a limiting belief. You see what I'm saying? And so a lot of you guys may have those thoughts based on A, your childhood, B, an event or an occurrence that's happened to you. And we've got to learn how to let those go. And we're going to get there today. So here's the deal. Your belief systems define how you think. How you think influences how you act. How you act defines your life events, your decisions. And then that's re and that reinforces your belief system. So you can see the feedback loop. So if you're in a feedback loop, and I call it a negative feedback loop of a limiting belief. Let's say that the belief that bad things always happen to you. So that's your belief. Bad things always happen to me. 
So you will define how you think based on that. You'll say, hey, listen, things may be going good right now, but I know something bad is going to happen. And then you'll find those things that happen and that influences how you act. So you'll act in a level of sadness, anxiety, depression. You'll be upset. You'll do things to get that belief system to be true. And that will define your events in your life. And those events in your life won't be uber happy. They'll be, they'll be marred with drama and negativity and bad things. And that will just simply reinforce the belief system. See, I told you, all bad things always happen to me. Here's, I'll give you an example. I, you know, I hate talking about death, but it's a, it's a great way to, to graphically get you guys to see what it is that I'm talking about. So my father passes away or gets killed in a car wreck at age five. So his father, um, I call him Granddaddy Joe. Granddaddy Joe became kind of one of my father figures. He had emphysema. He smoked his whole life and he passed away when I was about 14 years old. So lost another person. So you see my, my belief system got reinforced. Like, look, look at this. Love my dad. He's gone. Love my granddaddy, Joe. He's gone. And then if you guys have read my book, um, The Purpose of Pain, you know that when I was about 17, 18 years old, my next door neighbor, Lonnie, who had become kind of my fatherly figure, um, passed away on Christmas Day of a heart attack. I had to give him CPR. I should say I got to give him CPR. So the ambulance came and he passed away on the way to the hospital. And then when I was 25 years old, my best friend Chuck put a shotgun in his mouth and committed suicide. So from the time I was five to 25, I had unbelievable reinforcement that bad things happen to me. But I made a decision on that very day, the day that I found out that my friend Chuck had, had killed himself. I made a decision. I made a pivotal decision. And I'm like, I can keep living like this. I can keep believing this. I can keep going down this road. And this is what's going to be given to me. I'm going to find ways and reasons to to be sad and to be upset and to think that life is bad and to think that bad things happen to me and that, you know, you can see that you can see the cascade of how that could have helped, it could have impacted me. But I made, made a very pivotal decision on that day. And I'm about to go through with you guys how I've overcome all the limiting beliefs that I created for myself at such a very early age and that had been reinforced through life events. You see, we get more in life, we get more in life of what we look for, right? And I'm not saying I was looking for death, but the death that happened around me and in, 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 in my life was magnified because I was framing it through a lens of bad things happen to me. And I believe that anyone that I loved, anyone that I got close to was going to be taken away from me. Maybe not through, through death, but through some event, I was going to lose what I loved. That was my massive limiting belief, and it negatively impacted me for so long. I thank God every day that I was able to overcome that limiting belief, move past it, and create new powerful positive beliefs, because now I have a life of abundance and love and joy, and I don't see life that way. I see life from a, through a very different frame. And so what I want, I want to tell you guys that so that you understand if I can do it, you can do it. If I could get over that, you can get over that, and whatever it is could be money. I used to have the same belief system about money. At one point in my life, I had $40,000 in credit card debt, $40,000 in credit card debt. Some of you guys just fell on the floor. Now I have zero debt. I'm abundantly wealthy, zero debt, no credit card debt, period. I got myself out of it because I changed my belief system about money. You see, I used to believe money was scarce. I used to believe money was, I'll, I'll never have money. I'll never be, I'll never be money. And that's why I got $40,000 in credit card debt because I said, listen, I'm just going to live wide open. I'm going to put it on a credit card, whatever. I probably won't even be here to have to pay it off. Like I created this story in my brain about money. Like even if I get money, I'll just lose it. So I might as well spend everything I've got. Paycheck to paycheck, like going hard, living hard in the paint. Wasn't a very happy, productive way to live. So when I made that monumental shift, between the ages of 25 and 30, I changed everything. I got myself out of credit card debt. I paid off that $40,000 and I have not had an ounce of debt since. If it gets bought, it gets paid for. And that's my new belief system about money. Money's abundant. Money is, is, is infinite. There's enough money for all of us. Whatever job you do, you can make as much money doing that job and or another job whatever it is that you want to do. Remember, I'll even tell you this. I, I was resistant and I don't even call myself a personal trainer. Like I did a little bit of personal training, but I came a personal trainer when I was 17 years old, but 
the thought of calling myself a personal trainer never associated with me because I looked at personal trainers as not being able to make any money. I looked at it as like a dead end career where you're only going to be able to make a few dollars an hour. And then that's just going to be, you know, you're never going to get to where you want to go. So I created a life for myself. I created a, a business around fitness and wellness and, and living your best life through personal development, everything I combined, my love for personal training, my love for the very thing that got me out of the places and spaces that I was living in that weren't beautiful and, and, and abundant and awesome. I combined those two things. I said, listen, people aren't going to ever be as healthy and fit as they can be unless they change their psychology. So what I've done is I've created a, a human performance and transformation lifestyle optimization business that I get to help people from all over the world do amazing things with their lives that's not simply predicated on how many push-ups or setups you can do. So I created that out of the creation of my own desires to be more, have more, do more. If you guys have heard my story, I sat in a room one day and a man told me from stage, there was a thousand people in the room. He said, all of you can be, do, and have everything in life you desire. And I'm like, holy shit, what? I mean, nobody's ever told me that before. I just, can you say that again? Are you 100% certain of that? And he kept reinforcing that for the three days that we were in that seminar. You can be, do, and have everything you desire. You can be, do, and have everything you desire. And I'm like, okay. I, I don't even know this guy, but I'm going to trust what he's saying. And I'm going to go after life with that, with that belief system that I can be, do, and have everything I desire. And I'm going to, I'm going to forget all this other nonsense that's stuck in my brain. And trust me, it, I'm a stubborn human being. I had to beat out those limiting beliefs. I literally had to beat them out of my own subconscious brain and plug in new beliefs, guys. But I'm telling you, it's so doable. So let's talk about number one. Here's what I want you guys to do. We're going to talk about how you identify your limiting beliefs. Because if you can't identify them and radically honestly identify them, kind of like I just shared some really personal stuff with you guys. You got to be able to, you got to, be able to share some stuff. You got to be able to get vulnerable about this. So number one is I want you to write down your beliefs about anything you feel strongly about that has an influence in your daily life about your finances, your health, your relationships, your spirituality, anything and everything. By writing them down, you can actually see which beliefs are allowing you to grow and which beliefs are actually holding you back. Number two is I want you to assess your behavior. Remember, your beliefs are associated and are, and are, and are in direct correlation with your behaviors. Your behaviors are in direct correlation with your beliefs. So think about scenarios where you've acted in a negative or toxic way, and then think about why. If you look closely at your toxic behavior, you might discover that the underlying cause was a limiting belief. And let's remove the word might. You're going to discover that that toxic behavior, because humans are, are, are patternistic creatures. We do the same things habitually over and over and over again. When you get uncomfortable or you get in a fight or an argument or a heated conversation, you usually respond and behave with the same mechanisms and mannerisms. It's because you're, 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 it's a limiting belief that you've used to keep yourself stuck in that scenario. So assess your behaviors. Number three, identify areas where you feel challenged. If you notice that you have a recurring challenge in your life in a certain area, this could be caused by a limiting belief. I've shared a couple with you. One of mine was about love. The other one was about money. Both of those were reoccurring challenges that kept showing up in my life. The universe and God giving me an opportunity to consistently work on those through adversity. But I wasn't ready for that. I looked at adversity as it was a horrible thing. What I realized when I decided to make the shift I can be, do, and have everything that I desire was that adversity was actually going to be my advantage because I had already gone through so much. Like God and the universe had prepared me to overcome anything that came at me, but I just couldn't see it. So it wasn't until I opened my eyes and I got the vision for the life that I wanted and I started living based on that vision that my life changed exponentially. So for example, a challenge could be struggling to make enough money. You always think, oh my gosh, I'm just so unlucky in love. Gosh, I can't, I can't get out of it. I'm in a dead end job that I hate. I'll never get a good job. 
These are belief systems that keep coming around at you and they're predicated on the way you behave. All right, now let's talk about seven steps to getting rid of those limiting beliefs, kicking them out. Seven steps that are gonna help you kick out those limiting beliefs and get new, powerful, positive beliefs plugged into that computer system, which is your subconscious brain. Number one is you're gonna ask yourself if your beliefs are true. Read the belief out loud and ask yourself, do I really believe this is true? Answering no to yourself out loud might seem silly, but if simply stating that out loud, that no, that is not true, gives you permission and tells your brain subconsciously that that is no longer a belief system that we have. Now, will that work if you do it one time? Absolutely not. You're going to have to consistently, anytime that thought comes up, gosh, I just, I'm, I'm unlucky in love. No, you're not. You just haven't found the right person yet. You're going to reinforce that with a powerful, positive statement. But when you do, you are going to go all in on that person because that's the person that you're supposed to be with. That's the person. You see what I'm saying? Like you have to reframe that brain. And by doing that, you're going to reprogram that subconscious mind. Number two is determine the source of the belief. Ask yourself, how did I get this belief? So for me, I got the belief about love. Bad things happen to me. Anybody I love will be taken away from me from life events. I could clearly see, I'm like, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. And I associated those events with the rest of my life. Well, that's not true, Jay. Just because that happened doesn't mean that's going to happen. It's completely unrealistic if you really want to get down to, to, the, to the truth of the matter. So ask yourself, where did I get this? Where did it come from? Sometimes we believe things with certainty, but when we really think about them, we're not even sure why we believe them. You understand what I'm saying? We're not even sure why. See, my association with, with money being scarce was predicated on my belief system about life being fragile and bad things happening to me. I, I convinced myself, like, listen, my dad got killed before he was 40. Like, look at all the, my best friend was 25. Like, I'm going to be lucky to even be around. Like, why not just go hog wild? You want to go on a trip? Here's a credit card. You want that? Here's a credit card. Like, just living recklessly. But they were, they were coupled. They were based together. So when I started to work on one, the other one improved and vice versa. And then by tackling them both in unison, I was able to overcome them both. So a lot of times your negative limiting beliefs are going to be associated and connected to each other. And you're going to be able to overcome both of them or all three of them or whatever it is with one positive, powerful momentum shift, right? So sometimes we don't even know where they come from. Number three is your declaration. Declare to yourself, I do not believe this anymore. That is 100% not true. And now look for proof to show yourself that it's not true. Let's use myself as an example again. I decided I was no longer going to believe that bad things happened to me. And then I started to look at all the beautiful things that were presented to me in my life. I met Lori in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico on a random trip. I met the love of my life, the person I'll be with for the rest of my existence. We've been together for over, I, mean, I think we're going on 17 years. I don't even know because it's so amazing. I met her in Cabo San Lucas. She, I lived in Texas at the time she lived in California. If good things didn't happen to me, I would have never been in Cabo. I would have never met that human. I would have never taken the opportunity to say, holy shit. Like, this is a cool human. Like, I'm never letting this person out of my sights again. If I still had that old belief system that I'm never going to find happiness, I'm never going to find love, she could have been in the same room and I would have let her walk right out the door. But I changed my belief system and things started, I started to see things differently. I found proof that things, good things do happen to Jay Nixon. Number four is imagine being free from that belief. What's it going to feel like? when you no longer have that, that bad feeling about love, that bad feeling about money, that bad feeling about your job, that bad feeling about blank. How's that gonna change you? How's your life gonna feel? How's your life gonna look? Number five, replace the belief. Find another belief that counteracts the old belief. So example of what I just told you. My old belief system was bad things happen to me. Never going to be in love, never going to find love. If I do love somebody, they're going to be taken away from me. 
that's complete hogwash. I am open and ready to receive. And I'm going to find somebody that I want to spend the rest of my life with. I go to Mexico, boom, there, been together ever since. She, Like I said, she lived in California. I live in Texas. Three months after we met, I got my happy ass in my car, drove to California, and she hasn't been out of my sight yet. Right? That's how you make a difference in your life. You start taking powerful, positive actions toward the new things that you want, not the old things that have held you back for so long. Number six, find evidence of that new belief. Find evidence of that new belief being valid. Keep adding evidence until you feel comfortable with that new belief. So I kept showing up for her. I kept saying, listen, like I'm going to do, I'm going to do everything I can to change the narrative that I have about love, about someone being connected to me, about me being able to love, give love, receive love, all of those things. I did the same thing with money. I stopped thinking, oh my gosh, I'm always going to be paycheck to paycheck. I'm always going to be broke. I'm always going to have this scarcity mindset. I paid off that $40,000 and it was almost like a freeing of like, now what? Now what am I capable of? And then I started the creation of my new life. And it has been abundantly amazing ever since. Number seven is test yourself. Observe your feelings, behaviors, and the results after you replace that belief. Once you've eliminated the old belief and replaced it with something more powerful, you'll feel and behave differently. You'll produce different results in life. But you've got to be open to those feelings. And sometimes, often, those are going to feel uncertain. They're going to feel messy. They're going to feel confusing. Know that that's part of the process. Know that that's part of the growth and the maturation of you as the human that you were supposed to be. You were born to be. Turn that, th that temperature up and allow it to get hot. Embrace the warmth. Let that establish that as your new level. That's my new thermostat. That's my new, that's my new point of excitement. That's my new point of wealth. That's my new point of love. And then continue to grow that. Don't get even stuck at that place. Here's the beautiful thing about this. We can consistently elevate our temperature, our thermostats, our success, our involvement, especially once we learn how to get rid of these limiting beliefs. Because then what we can do is we can take our belief systems we currently have, even if they're amazing. Like one of my core values is to be consistently overly joyed with life and also discontent at the same time. Also want more, want more of that joy, want more of that happiness, want more of that success. And if I do that, I can consistently love the life I'm living and also want that new life of amazingness and awesomeness. Now, here's something that's gonna stand between you and your success. And I believe in giving you knowledge and tools and resources. So what I'm about to tell you is probably the biggest deterrent from you actually leaving where you are and going to where you want to be. And it's very, very relevant and relevant in all of our lives right now. And it's something called confirmation bias. So here's what confirmation bias is. It's the tendency to interpret evidence as confirmation of one's existing belief systems and or theories. People display this bias when they select information that supports their views and by ignoring contrary information, or when they interpret ambiguous evidence as supporting their existing attitudes and behaviors. Pause, right? We're not gonna get into the current state of the world right now, but you guys all just went to a place or space where you know someone, and we won't say you because that's always really challenging, right? But it might be you, probably is you, that has a belief system and they will find anything that confirms that belief system, even in the face of contrary data and documentation that doesn't support that. They will view that. The new thing is that people will say, well, that's fake news. That's a lie. That's blah, blah, blah. Here's my, here's my stance in life. If you guys should adopt this, because it works really, really well for me. I'm always confident, and I'm sometimes wrong. And I reserve the right to change my mind at any moment based on new information that is presented to me. What that has allowed me to do, and I'm no different than you, like confirmation bias is real and it's in all of our lives and we all do it. I'm no different than you at all. But what it's done for me is it's allowed me to look at life through the lens of when new information is presented to me, 
I try not to view it from the frame of my belief system. I try to look at it very um, unbiased. Where did it come from? What's the point of this? Who wrote it? Why? What's the information in this document or in this blank that could help me get to a better place in life? But if I look at it through the bias or through the lens of what I already believe, then if, it, if something's in there that contradicts my belief system, what will I do? I will immediately discredit it. And if we do that in life, that's a lot of the times why we get stuck. Because what will happen is, I'll give you a perfect example. So I had an old belief system that bad things happen to me. Anybody I love will be taken away from me. And so I avoided love at all costs. I could have easily met Lori in Mexico, had a beautiful time, and then just let her go away. It was challenging. I lived in a completely different state, thousands and thousands of miles away. We just met. We met for like seven days. I could have easily said, ah, nah, that ain't, that's nothing. That's just, you know, that's just, you know, we got, we had a good time, blah, 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 forget about it. That would have been my confirmation bias. That would have been me saying, listen, that's not going to work out. Look how challenging that's going to be. I live in Texas. I have a job. She lives in California. She has a job. There's no freaking way that's ever going to work. But I didn't do that. I put my biases that bad things happen to me. This is going to be too hard. How will it ever work? I had no idea. But what I wanted was the life that I had vision envisioned for myself. And I knew that this human could be a massive and beautiful part of that. And I wasn't willing to let my old belief systems, the old facts and evidence about my life dictate my future. So I was open to a new beginning. Same thing happened to me when I started my career that I have now, my job, my passion, my purpose. I, I tell people all the time, I get up at three o'clock in the morning and they're always like, what, you're crazy, you're a psychopath. I'm like, I am, I'm psychotic about getting to do something that I love every day. I don't go to work ever. I haven't worked in 10 years. I haven't gone to work, I haven't worked in 10 years. Truth be told, I work all the time. Today's my birthday. I'm recording this on my birthday. You know why? I freaking love it. I'm in love with my life. You know what I would have done 15 years ago on my birthday? I would have avoided work at all costs. I'm not doing that. Today's my birthday. I ain't going to work. I'm not doing that. BS, man. Screw that guy. Forget that, man. I found something I love. It's my birthday today. And I'm, I'm recording this training that shows you, tells you my brain is different. Right? I see value in this. I want to do this. I love this. You can overcome your, conf your confirmation bias, this guys. And here's the impact of a confirmation bias. In the early 60s, there was a cognitive psychologist that kind of came up with this. It's called Wasu Wasson's Rule. He discovered that he demonstrated that people have a tendency to seek information that confirms their existing beliefs. It's much like the news. So let's just use, I don't like to, I'm not, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get political or confrontational with him, but if you think about the news, I, I think, I don't watch the news. I haven't watched the news in 15 years. But from what I hear, there are, there are kind of opposing news stations. And so if you, you will watch the news that confirms your current belief system, why would you watch the news that didn't? It's just going to piss you off, right? Am I right? And so that's what we do is we'll seek information that validates our current belief systems. One of the reasons I don't watch the news is because I want to make my own decisions. I want to get data and I want to get information and I want to, I want to create Jay Nixon's version and vision of what life is, of what the truth is, of what I should do with my own life. What decisions should I make based on the information that I have? Not the information that somebody told me I should believe, but the information that I want and I need to believe about my own life. See, that's how you get out of this, this minutia of the average thinking. That's how you get out of the minutia. If you're in that minutia, you're in, the, you're in the average, you're in the middle. Here's a secret. Do you know that it's the exact same distance from excellence to awful if you're at average? If you're right in the middle, it's the exact same distance from the top as it is to the bottom. So why not go up? Why not go after the life you love, the life you, the life you, you, oh my God, that would be so amazing. Go after that. It's the same distance, requires the same amount of effort. Here's the deal. Unfortunately, 
cognitive bias can prevent us from looking at situations objectively. It can cause us to also see influence and lead us to make poor decisions because it were validated in the moment, the instant gratification of validation, as opposed to getting the real information that might be transformational in our life. It was like me sitting in that seminar for the first time. Dude says, Jay, you can be, do, and have anything you desire. I could have easily said, you are crazy as shit. I do not believe you. But I was ready. I knew the life I was living wasn't the life I was born for. And I knew I couldn't continue that existence. And so I had to leave all my confirmation biases at the door and say, okay, bro, I'm going I'm to give this a shot. And that's all I'm asking you to do today. I'm asking you to say, okay, bro, I'm going to give this a shot. I, I'm going to believe you. I'm going to believe that I can overcome these limiting beliefs. I'm going to believe that I can be, do, and have everything in life I desire. And I'm going to start doing the exercise. I'm going to do exactly what you've asked me to do today, Jay. And I'm going to see what happens. Here's my promise. If you really believe it, if you 100% believe in your soul that you can be, do, and have anything and everything you desire, if you're willing to take the actions necessary, I gave you some actions today. You're going to have to do some work to get rid of these limiting beliefs. But if you do it, and if you do it consistently, and if you do it with all the passion and purpose inside of your heart, you will have a brand new life. And that life will be more abundant and more amazing than you could have ever have dreamed of. Guys, I love you. I hope you take advantage of this opportunity. We'll see you soon. I told you that was going to be a good one. Overcoming limiting beliefs will be the key, one of the main keys to your success in life. And I know that training was a lot to, to digest. So spend some time with it. Listen to it again. Think about it. Process it. Write down all of your thoughts. Send me any questions that you have. I would love to help you through that process. Now get ready for training number four. It's mastering your mind. It's the battle between your inner coach and your inner critic. You see, we've all got both. We've all got that inner coach that, that builds us up and, and keeps us going. And then on the opposite side, we've got that inner critic, that voice in our head, that self-sabotaging behavior, that negative self-talk. I'm going to teach you how to listen to your inner coach and quiet your inner critic. You're going to love this training.